So if we add these two, we want to find the final temperature. We got initial. They're saying you put these two together. These are going to be react. This is an acid here. This is a base. How did I know this is an acid, by the way? There's an H in the front. Uh, its name is hydrochloric acid. There's several ways. If you haven't ever memorized table 5.1, that is a key. We'll use it a lot coming up in future chapters. But table 5.1, list of strong acids, strong bases, very important table to know. Uh, this, how do you know this is a base? The OH, yeah, also in that table. So when these add an acid or base, it's called a neutralization reaction or a double replacement. The anion of one will go to the cation of the other, so we got an NaCl. And the cation of the first one will go to the anion of the next, H2O. Or the basic thing is an acid plus a base forms salt plus water. And that's going to be true whenever you have strong acids, strong bases. Okay. They want to know the final temperature after this happens. They, so that's a question mark. They give us delta H of what they call neutralization, or that's basically delta H of reaction. It's a Q. And that number is minus 56 kilojoules per mole. Okay, what does the minus mean, by the way? Exothermic. So thus, we're expecting final temperature, because it's heat's given off, to be higher than this number, because it's exothermic. Okay, so, and they just say this happens in a styrofoam coffee cup calorimeter. So let's say we have a coffee cup. You have the liquid here. Reactants go to products, so these reactants go to these products inside there. It's exothermic, so delta H standard is a negative number. And it, uh, there's a T initial goes to a T final. Okay, well let's set up our little equation then. Sum of the Q's equals zero. Again, I know if it's a sum of the Q's, first of all they said coffee cup calorimeter. It has to be this thing. There's a temperature change, that was another hint. There's a reaction, that's another hint, that we're using this. Okay. So, uh, what are the cues in this problem? So first you'd ask, is there anything that changes temperature? Mm -hmm. Yes, what is it? The water? Yeah, essentially the water, everything around the reaction. Okay, because it happens in a coffee cup, it's filled with some liquid. I don't know if they give you the volume. Let's see. Well, you have the volume of the solutions. So we'll go Q of the water. All the stuff around the reaction. Okay. Any other Qs? I'll give you a hint. There is calorimeter. The Q of the calorimeter. So this container here. Any other Qs? Enthalpy. Enthalpy from? The reaction. The reaction. So I'll just put Q reaction. Is that okay? Now, first place, easy place to always start with the calorimeter. In the problem, you have to ask yourself, do they give me the heat capacity or the specific heat of the calorimeter? In this case, I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. Maybe it's there somewhere. Doesn't see it. If no number is given, you gotta assume it's zero. It's good to have it there in the beginning because you want to make sure maybe there is a number for it that they give you. In lab, you have to find this. In when you're doing homework questions, sometimes they have you do it, sometimes not. Yeah. Um, how do you say you know it's zero? How do I know? It's zero. Did it say I'm probably? It doesn't necessarily say it's zero. What you're looking for. This would be an MCP delta T term. If they don't give you CP, you're assuming it's zero. So the, another way of saying that, you're assuming that the effects of the calorimeter is negligible. Is essentially your assumption. So you just say it's zero. Basically, calorimeters, they'll have a very small CP. So sometimes they're negligible. All right.
So now we've only have two Q terms left. Which one am I? Which one am I really solving for? Where is T final hidden? In the QH little. Yeah, it's hidden in here. Okay? So let me write this out. Zero equals M C P delta T plus Q reaction, that's this number right there. So uh, I'll just write delta H. Remember, we'll have to change the units on delta H because it's not quite right. Hi, come in. Come in. Hi. Okay, so let's try this. Um, let me just kind of write these on the side. We need, uh, and I'll rewrite this a little bit. I'll go M, C, P, T final minus T initial. Okay? So, it's very easy. We've got T initial, right? T initial is right here. So T initial, check. T final, that's what I want. Okay, so I'll just put this is what I'm solving for. I'll put a little question mark right there. Do I have CP? Yes. Yeah, how do I know that? Um, CP of water is 4.1. Exactly. This will be given in your test. It's all over the book. It's 4.184 joules per gram degree C. So that's a given number. Check. Fine, on the back of your test or in your book if you need it. It's heat capacity of water. You're assuming that everything here has a heat capacity that's similar to water, which is a totally fine assumption. Okay. 